So far, the main issues with the model we've seen is that it's too simple, right? It's just a line or an hyperplane. And uh, in general, we're going to fail in feeding reasonable the, the training data, right? So one useful trick is like we can keep the linear approach, but just by modifying the input data, we can end up in a non-linear model, like the one we see in the figure. So the trick here is that we just need to expand the input data with polynomial bases. What it means is like we basically use the function phi. We can see here this function that grabs one x and expand it till some given degree. And then we have like a stretched version of one number into a vector of powers. So what, what it means at the end is like this matrix that has one data column can be transformed in a much bigger matrix where each column has an exponent, an exponential version of the original data. Of course, this could be apply, applied to uh, data matrices with uh, more columns, but in, for the tutorial purposes, we are going to use one. And P is some model parameter. So at the end, the model is, is exactly the same, is the same linear uh, approach, is the same solution. The only difference is like instead of the matrix X, we are going to, to have the matrix phi with a modified version of the data. Now we are going to use uh, the polynomial basis function that we saw previously in the slides in order to make a more flexible model out of their linear regression, right? Um, so let's write down here. Basically here, we just need to build a fine matrix, right? Okay, so phi, is, we know that it is built by using the power of the columns. So it's going to be an ampy matrix. We're going to st stack um, all the columns that are going to be uh, provided in this list. So basically, let me do the following. What we want to do is to create something like this, right? Is to do, we grab the first column and we are going to power this with Y for Y in range um, some degree. Let's say we're going to define the degree of the polynomial, let's say 10, right? So for that degree, we're going to power every column. This is going to be an ampere array. And uh, we want this in a list. So all that needs to be stacked with the function np.column stack, right? So that is the way to build phi. An important detail is that we are going to normalize also the columns of this matrix because let's say like we start getting some numerical issues with the power, right? So we need to make sure that the the ranges are not go, are not exploding or or going too fast to zero, for example, right? So we can build a function here that normalizes all the columns of a given matrix. So I need to go over the columns, starting from the number one, right? Because the column zero has just ones. So it's going to be in the shape of the matrix, but the second coordinate of the shape. And uh, it's just as simple as, again, subtracting the mean.
and divide by the standard deviation. So we are going to return that matrix. So after building the matrix, we are going to normalize it. Okay, so this is like the creation of the of the matrix. Something is wrong here. I forgot to add the dividing. Okay, and uh, now we need to build a model, which is as before. It is phi transposed times phi. All that power to the minus to minus one and that times phi transposed times y. The same model but now applied over phi instead of x. Okay so now we have the model then again we need to create the scatter plot very similar to as we did before if we use a resolution of 100 points and then we create the the line with the resolution of 100 points right starting from the minimum value of phi in particular of the data column of phi to the maximum with a hundred number of points then we need the prediction of these values right so for, for the prediction, we need to transform the T into the same format as phi. So this is, is interesting, right? Because again, we have this trick to stretch the data. So if we want to predict over a line, we also need to stretch that line. So we're going to have to build the matrix phi for t the same way we did here so it's very similar code here so in instead of x is t it seems that that's supposed to be working oops we have our an array of too many indexes for the array okay let's see what happens Okay, this is because we here we haven't stacked the ones because this is done automatically, right? Why? Because the, this uh, the power starts in zero, right? Right in the range starts in zero. So the first column is going to be naturally the, a column of ones. So t so far t has just one column. Okay, so now it seems to be working. And now let's plot the model. So we are going to plot the data the same way it comes and we are going to plot now the predictions of the model with the phi matrix. So this is t and then um, phi t times w, this is the mean of the prediction, right? Let's use uh, crosses and yellow points and uh, to show. Okay, here we go. So as you can see now, the model is more flexible and we can play around, right? We can uh, change the degree. What if we use degree equal to 12 and then we recalculate the model and we get more 
uh, a more flexible model, right? 